Hello and welcome back to my job tutorial series. As you can see, our results from the last episode, which was pretty intense, pretty nice, covered a lot of um stuff, but it's more open. And because of that, um, if I were to go and continue this, um, all the stuff we could cover with this in uh, more episodes would be less um specific content as much as just a whole the methodology of making such an application so I'm gonna um, continue that on probably a separate series that's probably gonna be soon but uh... let's just start up today's episode which is of course episode fifteen and today um, of course as like I said instead of continuing with um, the stuff we have been covering we're going to uh... just fill in a bit of content that we haven't in the um, that we haven't in the past. Just some fillings, like um, I did explain in the previous episode that I wasn't gonna go over um basic I/O yet because normally, uh, as far as Java and most programming goes, when they say I'm um, I/O, which of course stands for input output, they normally mean for like file I/Os, like reading and writing from different text files. But that might not be um that uh, useful for you yet. At least until I do go over the um, the actual the the actual methodology for um, applications and stuff, which, like I said, will be in a different series. But what you might find useful is input and output from the terminal, like in cons in the console down here. We know that system dot out it prints down here, and system dot error prints down here. But there's another um, print stream that the system has because out um if we go in like system dot if system dot error you can see these are all print streams and then there's a system dot in which is an input stream and we're going to be using that print streams and input streams are also part of um the java io and such but uh they're not really uh files you can use them for files but the java uses them specifically for the terminal and such. So what we're going to do, we're going to create a new object that we've never heard of before and we're going to call it scanner. Now I need to import this from java.util.scanner. So you can see auto import. So just going to say equals new scanner. Now we have to give it an input stream and we're going to give it system.in not int. System.in that should work. So basically now what we can do is let's say oh and we're on yeah what am I doing um system dot out dot print line um please input your username and password Just make it like that, and then we're just going to do something system dot out dot print as opposed to print line. I've explained this in a pre previous episode, where um, print line automatically adds a line terminator at the end to go to the next line, and print doesn't. So username, and then we're going to do string username equals scanner dot um, next line which will read what you type in. And then we're going to do something, well, something identical to that for the password. Now, of course, what we're making isn't intelligent yet, but as since we do have a bit of leeway with this episode, we will probably be able to make it sort of good. And then we'll just do a new... Uh, okay. We should put a pers uh, backslash n here. And then we can do a print line. I think we do also to put a backslash n here. Actually, wait, you know, we're not doing that yet. What we're just going to do is output, just to show you that it's working, we're going to output username. And you know how we always concatenate our strings with a plus sign. We'll just use username plus password. And that's good enough for now. So now if we run it, of course we'll be doing stuff in the console. 
to be like, hey, please input your you. Oh, I misspelled username. My username will be Braliborn. Oh, that's incorrect. Uh, we shouldn't have had that slash line. And then my password will be, of course, password. Baralaborn password. See, it's now accepting stuff from us. I'll just do that again real quick. Ta-da. It works. Now, what this is, maybe we don't want to concatenate strings. And maybe we want to do something a little original with this. So I'm going to introduce another important thing, which is format. Which is, um, formatting is a very extensive topic, but this is one of the simple ways to do it. Basically, what we're going to be doing <clears throat> is formatting, well, is formatting something to, um, the console. Which, as opposed to system.out.println, which will print exactly that, and if you concatenate things, it'll do exactly that. But format can actually do stuff for, um, local um, like the local systems that the current system is doing, like mine is in probably um Western English and such, but this can actually format different things. So let's just put something. We'll just put one right now, and we'll put um um username percentage. Um, what ones do they normally use here? Um, no, 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 no. Okay. They can probably just put an S. And then I'll put a percent N. And then we'll do password. Then we'll do percent %s and percent %n. Now that is basically it. You're like, what the hell are those percent things? Well, percent %n is, like we all know and love, is like the backslash n, but the percent %n um, actually conforms to the current system. So backslash n is an actual Unicode keyboard thing that on most systems represents um, a line terminator and goes to the next sign. Percent %n for no matter what locale or whatever language your computer is using, it is always going to be the the uh, the line terminator. So it's just safer for um, internationalization. Now I have to put a couple objects because percent %s is um, what these things are with when we put the percent sign then a, um, another character. Those are called conversions and those are part of uh, formatting. And what those conversions will stand for is when we put something over here. So the first S will represent the first object argument that we put over here. What we're doing is it's, it's actually a string, but since a string is a type of object, we'll put username. And now if we print the both of these, this will print out username, and this will print out username. And we want this to print out password, so we'll just put another comma with we'll password. And what it should do is that this will reference the first one, and this will reference the second one, because they're in order like that. So now if we do this, oh, yeah, I have to input first, okay. And then, and then it says username, Braliborn, password, password. See, now it's a little bit neater than concatenation and having different print lines and such. So it's, it's neater, but also there are several other things you can do. Now the thing about um, percent, well, um, the this conversion s, it only references objects. Um, well, it specifically references object, but there are several other ones that we are definitely going to go over, such as um, we'll just um, we'll just put a new thing: public static void pass. We'll just put that all in there. That way we don't have to do that every single time. I did not want to do that. There we go. 
And there's that. Okay, now we can go into some other things. Now, let's see, what do I want, what do we want to do this time? Okay, we can do percent %c. Let's just set up a system.out.format. And our format, of course, will be a string. We'll say character percent %c. And then we'll do percent %n, just so we can skip to the next line. We'll do integer percent uh, d percent n then we'll do floating point which would be percent f percent n and anything else we should do nah that's good enough now we just need some arguments so we're obviously the first thing we should give it should be a character since it's asking for a character so we'll just give it um... what don't I use that often how about an A with an accent over it perfect then we want to give it an integer and we'll give this five and then the last but not least F is asking for a floating point so we'll give it um, why not 2.7 I forget the rest of E but that's a floating point Okay, I see. I can't use the A with an accent over it. <sighs> Darn. We'll just do a carrot. That's perfectly fine. Okay. Now if we run it, it should just print that out. Character, integer, floating point. Now you might, as, you might notice that, well, you should notice that it added a whole bunch of zeros. Now that is a great thing that we can... Um, just turn the corner and go into the rest of the stuff about formatting. Now, these are just the things we've been entering, the things that f the percent signs and then the character following it. Those are called conversions. There's also other things called argument index indices, which, you know, the singular of that is argument index. So what we're going to do next is we're just going to do um, something simple-ish. And we're going to do... Uh, integer number one percent d I might as well actually I should explain this now those conversion things we have been doing there are three for integers there's um, d which means it's gonna be a decimal integer which doesn't mean it's a floating point it just means it follows Dewey decimal system but you'll notice when I tell you the other one there's the other one is an O which makes it an octal integer, which means 0 through 7, which is a different way of formatting things, like the decimal system is based on um, tens, base 10. Uh, octal system is base 8, binary is base 2. Um, the next one is it um, x, percent x formats it for hexadecimal. And I believe um, I'm not sure a hexadecimal might be base 16. But I'm not sure I'm not fluent in hexadecimal, fortunately. Now, there's even more for floating point. There's, um, E, which, um, is base, it, uh, formats it in, uh, scientific notation, which you should know, the one I showed you, which was F, which is just normal decimal number. Then there's G, it's scientific notation or decimal format, depending on the precision um, which we will get to, which is that the thing we're about to get into. Then there's A, which will format as a hexadecimal floating point. With, yeah. And those are all those that are important, but now we're just doing that. And we'll just do space, integer 1, integer number 2. I'll just add a couple spaces, that is. Integer number 2 will be percent d as well then integer number three will be percent d as well now let's say we wanted these to be, we we wanted this to be integer one two well integer one so let's just say we wanted to use two things we need to use five and we wanted to use thirteen 
Now if we did this, and we printed it out, our results, don't know why it's building so much, it'll be that, because it's got um, the missing format argument exception, because it goes in order, and since we, it, you know, integer one, picked up the first one, that's five, picked up the second one, that's 13, picked up the third one, where the hell's the third one? And that's exactly, if you went in here, we got it exactly there was the problem. Now what we use here is the optional, of course, but uh, the, the argument in Dices. So if we go down, well actually if I go down, <laughs> yeah, how we use the argument um, in Dices would be right after the percent sign, we would do the number we want it to do, one, followed by just a dollar sign. And this time, in this one, we wanted to do the second argument, and this one, we wanted to do the first argument again. So, you do the at, right after the percent side, the index you want it to reference, then a dollar sign, and then whatever you want after that. So now if we run it, hopefully we won't get any errors. We get 5, 13, 5. There, it works perfectly. You can use them for, you know, floating points and objects and characters as well. And you can use them for anything. And the other two things, if I can get through them quick enough, because since I... I honestly, I never know, uh, I never know, uh, how long my videos are while I'm recording. I could probably do something to actually figure it out, but, um, doesn't matter right now. So, uh, if we were to, uh, say, so now the next two things are width and precision. Width is the minimum amount of um, spaces it can have, and precision is the maximum amount, maximum amount of characters this something can have. It's um, mainly useful for floating points. So we're just gonna make this. So we're just gonna do two things. We're gonna do pi, and we're going to do e, since those are two very nice mathematical constants, and we don't need to identify the index, but we are gonna provide it with two values. We're going to reference our math class and we're going to do math.pi and we're going to do math.e. I forget what e is equal to. If we hover over it, 2.718. Yeah, I had 2.9, I forgot the 18. Well, and uh, all the other unlimited things following it. But now if we just do um, percent %f, percent %f. And if we ran it now, it'll give us two. Um, we forgot the percent. Now we'll just go over here and do percent n. Now it'll look less ugly. We'll do pi is that long and e is that long. Now if you count right here, they have a precision of seven. That's the maximum amount of spaces, and their width is no great is no greater than seven. So what we can do, as far as I know, <laughs> is we can enter a width we want. So now let's just enter um, the minimum amount and let's just set it at 10. You put it right after the percent sign. And now, at least I'm certain, pretty fairly certain. Mm. Yay. Ugh, excuse me. And also, um, with formatting, since um percent signs denote a uh, since percent signs denote a uh, uh something you're doing special with formatting. If you do a percent sign, then another percent sign, then it'll print out a percent sign. So we'll get that many percent, that much percent, that much, that that many. Yes. <laughs> Now 
Okay. For um width, sorry to keep you waiting, you do um plus nine. Should be not that. Let's see. Percent sign plus however many, then you put the precision. We'll just put twelve. Maybe it has to be the whole thing. Yeah, wait. Yes. So if precision is twelve, you can see now that it has it has twelve characters. Then you maybe I can take this nine out. Yeah, you can see now it has twelve characters because it's precision. Precision is denoted by a dot and then the number. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. But if you wanted to do with, I think we could do like ten. I think it's ten dot twelve. Now if we reduce this to ten, you'll see now it's ten characters. Maybe if we just do ten dot, that'll be the minimum. Oh, never mind. I did something bad. My apologies. So yeah, ten dot, whatever. So if you do width, you also have to do precision. The first one is the width, and the second one is the precision. The width is the minimum amount of characters you can have. Precision is the maximum amount. And right now, it's just going to the maximum amount. So if we set this to, I don't know, 15. it would be like, wow! How long is pi do they set it to? Ends with 9.3. So if we set this to 16, then we might just get a 0. Yep, we get a zero. And if we set this to 20, we'll get even more zeros. Ta-da. Maybe we set this to 25. We might get an error. Okay, yeah. Rudius, you get the point. Precision and width, that's formatting. Uh, we went over the scanner as well, which of course is always useful. I mean, if you wanted to actually make a password program, you could just, you know, like, do if username equals equals Baraliborn and password equals password, then you'll do, like, do print out, you know, let them do whatever the hell you want, and if not, you can print out, hey, no, bad. Uh, so, yes, that is it. Um, so, again, I'll be, uh, make, probably make another series, not in the far future for the continuing of our intro to swing and java.ot but uh, in the meantime I'll see you later tomorrow will be another calculator tutorial episode and good programming to you